Cesar Gonzalez, euh, qui euh, vient de l'université de Grenade, donc il va parler en anglais, hein, et euh, donc euh, qui est vraiment euh, totalement euh, dans le sujet, hein, peut-être euh, la plus dans le sujet de nous tous, donc puisqu'elle travaille vraiment sur les rapports entre littérature, politique, philosophie euh, chez Foucault, Jacques Rancière et Georges Agamben. Hein, donc c'est vraiment une magnifique <rire> configuration. Euh, et euh, en particulier donc euh, sur euh, aussi le, la littérature hein, la littérature mondiale et des concepts très très actuels de la littérature et de la politique elle a publié un ouvrage euh, intitulé Literature and Politics in the Lita Foucault euh, et beaucoup euh, donc euh, d'essais hein, d'articles euh, notamment euh, ben, sur euh, également sur sur Jacques Rancière hein, euh, et euh, sur euh, Raymond Roussel aussi. Enfin, il y a un champ très large et je suis très heureux de l'accueillir euh, dans ce colloque. Thank you. So, we have a, do I need to say it in English? Or you? No, 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 it's, it's perfect. So, I'm very happy uh, to have you. Thank you. Thank you, Yeah, well, thank you, Kim. Thank you, uh, Isabel. I'm very happy to be here. And mm -hmm. thank you for all uh, uh, students here. Um, Sorry, I'm speaking in English because I'm understanding your uh, in, um, your text and your talks in, in French, but my French is really bad, so <laughs> I will speak in English. Um, I will do it uh, also slowly, and of course, if you don't understand something, you just need to ask. Um, I changed the, um, the title a bit because um, it, it is true, I'm very interested in the, the, the new temporalities uh, subjects, so times uh, in literature is a very huge subject. So I, I decided just introduce some questions and let them open because it's something I'm working, uh, it's a work in progress. Uh, so I will talk more about politics of literature and I will say something also about the, the, the concept of uh, donner à voir and, and time, but as I said, just an introduction. So I will share some considerations on Jean Rancière and Michel Foucault politics of literature and some reflections on the concept of donner à voir and temporality. The basic question is, and this is, I usually I'm usually thinking about the problem we have in the present time, so the, the problem is how to think an alternative form of distribution of the sensible in the crisis of the modern times. That is to say, a time, our time, when we are capable of imagining the end of the world rather than imagining modes of transformations and emancipation. And we are we know all this, this topic, uh, literature, films, so we are there, we are imagining already the end of the world, but not able to imagine another way of world, no? May, may, may I have a daughter 10 years old, and after COVID and the, the consequences, she said, you know, mom, I think Earth is better with us, and she's 10 years old, so <laughs> we have to work harder. <laughs> I consider with Rancière that temporality is an element of the narrative of history. As we know, each present revises its past and makes possible an image of the future, so that the future is also a historical concept. This is something uh, Jameson already said in Archaeologies of the Future, all of which allow us to think of model of non-violent heterotemporalities, that is to say, alternative models of two capitalist modernity. Since Plato, ontological political determination depends on action as rational principle. That is to say, we cannot think two things at the same time because, because we cannot do two things at the same time because we don't have the time to do them at the same time. According to Rancière, these borders between the discursive modes are at the basis of our democracy and precede the division between those who govern and those who are governed, le partage du sensible. The anthropological foundation is also built upon it, which coincides 
with a political distribution of the sensible and with an aesthetic which is a political aesthetic. Such a definition is what was stated by Aristotle in politics. In other words, what separates those who have the right to speak and those who, who doesn't or who don't between those who have the word and those who don't. As a consequence of this co-foundation of the political, linguistic, aesthetic and anthropological distribution, politics of forensia refers to what is seen and what can be said about it around who has the ability to see and the talent to speak around the properties of the space and the possibilities of time and of good. On the other hand, the theoretical principle of Foucault politics of literature also consider a principle of distribution, a principle of social distribution determined by the distinction between rational and irrational, a principle of social verisimilitude or a kind of social fictional pact and lastly, an eventual capacity of literature that enables it to make it visible a reality that forms the margins of that social verosimilitude and which had a direct relation with the less concept of virtuality. Something is there, but we don't see it. Uh, yes, the dialogue between this concept allow us to observe how Foucault and Rancière set forth an updating of the political power of literature. First, the concept of madness as a principle of social division described by Foucault refers to a principle of distribution that is historical and movable, which, is, which in modernity is based on the principle of rationality and in turn is determined by a social economic principle the distinction in society between those that produce wealth and those who don't them. Therefore, we find that both authors define the social distribution in terms of discrimination based on the force of work in action, that is, those who work and those who don't. In Foucault terms and on the time uh, conceded to take the word in Rancière terms. In both cases, this social distribution, this discrimination entails making this subject invisible and a discrimination of the subject who aren't given the principle of reasoning. In both, this social discrimination leads them to revise the Aristotelian Platonic tradition that's concerned art and politics. Let us not forget that poiesis in the classical era was seen as a category of techné, which means that art in the, this pre-modern foundation participate in this separation. For this reason, the aesthetic that is at the basis of politics determined that the artistic practice participate in the common as ways of doing and making that take part in the general distribution of the forms of being and the forms of visibility. Thus, say Rancière, the problem of literature, the reason why Foucault banished the poets is due precisely because it situates the citizen out of their place. I just want to add a very short uh, consideration about this uh, idea of uh, uh, Plato and borders. It's very interesting because uh, we already know uh, Socrates in Pedro working around the city, yeah, in the margins, but there is also in the Republic, and there is this uh, costumbrist scene that show how in the Pireus, which is a border area due to being the port, different cults live alongside each other, making a certain relativism necessary. And the style Foucault implies here is very interesting too because he's writing in free style, uh, in free indirect style, relating the narration is uh, very realistic. Uh, I think the problem uh, Plato has with literature is precisely this, reali the reality, no, because it's not the idealistic uh, idea of literature. 
yeah, this is uh, end of uh, the consideration. This is to say the problem of poiesis is for Plato that the theater is funded on the impossibility of doing two things at once. And because it disturbs the clear partition of identity, activities, times, and spaces. For Hansier, therefore, the question of fiction is a question of distribution of places and literature in modernity will come to de-regularize the structure of hierarchy of political beings. This is because, in, my, in his opinion, well, he is here and is <laughs> he will say it is uh, agree, modern literature is fundamentally democratic and unbalanced the structure of rules or representation of the same of community. <coughs> but how does it do it, this? How does it confront the structuring of the perspective space, what Rancière called the police? According to his explanation in an interview with Eric Alice in 2000, published as Biopolitics or Politics, literature confronts the structure of the world, the set of acts that effectuate a supplementary property a property that is biological and anthropologically unlocable, the equality of speaking beings. Literature thus acts as a device of equality, as a fiction of equality. And this is something I want to have, uh, I want to think uh, more in, in this uh, talk. Foucault, for his part, critics the Aristotelian concept of fable. So the other concept, important in, in Aristotle. His aim was to underline the fundamental nature of fiction that had remained in a subordinate place in Aristotle poetics compared to fable. Foucault recalls the Aristotelian definition of the fable as configuration of the work based on elements placed in a certain order and of fiction as the plot of the relation established through the discourse itself between who speaks and what is spoken about. But all the fiction for Foucault is an aspect of fable, nevertheless, and this is crucial, causal logic is a mode of fiction and not a basic structure of the story. And it has been seen uh, since Plato, since Aristotle. Fiction, therefore, affects the modes of articulation of all discourses. And he adds that the most modes of fiction are, moreover, historical when he states that the relation between fable and fiction is determined by the mythical possibilities of culture. Its writing or plots depends on the possibility of the language, while, while its fiction is determined by the possibility of the act of speaking. Uh, this is a quote. A narr narrative fable resides in the mythical possibility of the culture. Its writing resides in the possibility of the language. Its fiction in the possibility of the speech act. This makes it possible to consider that the verosimilitude of a narrative, what a society is prepared to accept as credible, depends on a specific historical moment and not on the logical structure of the narrative. But as well as affecting the modes of historical narration, <coughs> what a society accept, accept as fictional that is to say, as this kind of social fictional part, and this, uh, so I, I mean, this um, is, is the same uh, when we are reading a book, we are accepting a pact, a verosimilitude of pact, we have exactly the same when we live in society. Would also affect very diction, or that which a society accepts as modes of telling the truth. And what allows this overlapping between fiction and very diction in Foucault's work is the gaze. In a text, uh, 1963, Distance, Aspect, Origin, Foucault defined fiction as the flight of the arrow 
that heats up between the eyes and offers up everything that appears. And as the nervous nervure <coughs> of what does not exist, just as it is. So, showing the invisible. And years later, <coughs> in the stage of philosophy, he declared that his interest was then in the description of the mode in which the West was organized its games of prediction through the gaze, the spectacle of the world. He also developed this focus in the last year of this, uh, his research. In the Lubain lecture, from doing through telling, he fully confronted the question of how and in what condition a mode of the prediction could appear in history following Nietzsche's Barsagen. It is a question of defending the, most, the modes of the redition in their plurality to explore the form of obligation by which each one of these modes links to the subject of truth telling. In short, it is a question of the historical politics of the true or a historical a political history of the redition. Therefore, I believe it to to be <clears throat> of particular interest to undertake a reading of the genealogy of prediction and literary fiction. In order to understand the modes in which the subject is emancipated through a political aesthetic of the self. But this is a project that uh, is open, it's nothing closed. According to Rancière, therefore, literature will counter the division that is at the basis of politics with a transparent fact, close to ut pictura piesis, but not at a mere return to the classic state, but very much to the contrary, removing the concept of truth as verita that is found in the basis of the oratia motto and introducing, introducing here a political version of Alessia. This is a, a very critical concept in Rancière. Rancière introduced as opposed to the traditional veritas in which the word and the thing coincide, an alesia that here separates truth from reason. In contrast to Plato and Aristotle, truth is no longer adaptation to the idea, and neither will perception be to look at the idea as in the Platonic myth either. Whereas the truth of Veritas is identified with a rectitude of enunciative representation, Aletheia functions as a fictional mode of emancipation insofar as it's transcendent the political distribution of the sensible. Rancière, however, defined literature and art as the place in which their own truth happens, in the indifference of the term and the ne necessity of the work. Yeah, this is, uh, is, is the way how, how he's working to uh, go through this uh, dialectic between the autonomy and the uh, compromise. So, it's, so this is how he is going through this uh, dialectic, there is no dialectic here any, any longer. Literature is therefore the pure making visible in the state of perplexity or mutiness that modern literature produces as contradictory poetics, which the author calls mute letter, mute speech. In this mute speech, the concept of writing unfolds and is at the same time a speech, a speech or founded or of all its body that can let our beer without witness to it. And it's also that bears the idea of writing in its own body. The contradiction of literature could be defined as the tension between these two beings of writing. Thus, the concept of Aletheia in Francia, like this making visible, is a profound critique of the minuses that Aristotle defined as imitation of human action. Um, and I want to, be, uh, to be underline these actions. And it is very close 
to the definition of the concept of that Auerbach described in his book with the same name, Mimesis, in 1942. Rancière thinks, therefore, along with Auerbach, that's an opposing Aristotle, that literature is closer to history than to philosophy, questioning the principle of verisimilitude that governs that classical form of poiesis. But the story does not coincide with the Aristotelian proposal because for Rancière, on the contrary, there is no tie of casuality that order the plot and legitimates the established order. Rancière thus makes a critique of the narrative nature of the story using the resources of literary analysis. And so the politics of the literary text in particular and the role of literature and art in their relation with the story is to reorder the official history in another way. Thus, art and literature quietly assert their aptitude for all kinds of learning. End of quote. This is the figure of history. History, therefore, is reordered and is that time in which those who have no right to occupy the same place can occupy the same image. This is also figure, uh, figures of history. Literature and arts are capable of this mode of telling in another way, and they do so, says Rancière, consciously or unconsciously, intentionally, and beyond what was intended. And this is because literature enables suspension between two different regimens of explanation. In this suspension, truth as memory takes place or what Rancière describes as unfold the fullness netless in its simple prison. By cutting the thread of any reason, you leave the scene, the attitude, the face with a muteness that gives them double the power, stopping the, the gaze on this evidence of an insistent linked to the very lack of a reason and unfolding that evidence as a potentiality belonging to another sensory world. Another world that nevertheless already is, only we have not seen it before. We have not given it presence before. Literature therefore actualizes a virtuality, we can say, of the present, close at hand, I'm using an expression that uh, Agamben was using, but it's also close to another concept in, in Didi Ugerman. In this way, Hansia responds to the decision that links action and rational thought, the virtuality of another person, thus enable first thinking of how things simultaneously at the same time are not and so opposing the action reaction, uh, reason determine, determining that has been at the basis of the distribution of the sensible. Since Plato and Aristotle, which attribute a situation and a time to each citizen in accordance with the technique they develop. And second, proposing a mode of thinking the time of the new mythologies as simultaneity of the present. This is already far from the future of utopias and in the line with other works that had been undertaken since the last. Therefore, the truth of literature moves closer to Foucault's definition of it as virtuality of the present, in plain sign but at the same time hidden. Thus, Rancière gives back to literature its, uh, uh, um, I think that the concept is uh, unfamiliarity. No? This is the, uh, the, the concept, the, the idea of the de desautomatization, we say in Spanish, but I know it's uh, the familiarization as contradictory character and gives Alessia a radical political value. The difference that mediates between them is, however, that the demand for political and cognitive equality of all operates at the basis of 
Ranciev thought, and I think this is very important. He describes equality as a predialectic potentiality, I would say, which in literature is the pure donner avoir, making visible, giving the, the image as indetermination. And this is a quote. To write is to see, to become an I, an I, to put things into the pure medium of their vision that is in the pure medium of their idea. It is moreover an absolute manner of seeing. In a similar way, Foucault takes on the Nietzschean project of a critic and therefore of op opening to a new common thought that, say Nietzsche in Exelmo, is based on the art of separate, uh, separation without creating hostility, to refrain from confounding things and to keep from reconciling things. This description, description also summarizes the proposal of a non-dialectical, differential, and plural thought. Thus, simplifying, Foucault thought is based upon the political linguistic action, and Rancière thought on the suspension, suspension of the division between those that know and the ignorant, between those adept at government and those who are passive and must be government. Let us remember that for Rancière, the politics of literature is really linked to a science of society and the creation of a new mythology. So connecting with the idea I already introduced with Foucault. This is such a way that in Rancière, the statement politics of fiction also function in a second sense, namely the proposal of an aesthetic of equality will be functioning as a new mythology in which equality is put forward as historically and a priori the also because we could simplify emancipation is possible if we first think it is possible. Thus the logic of equality is traced against the logic of distribution. That is to say, the logic of non-contradictory thought. According to Aristotle, the possibility of thought cannot escape the principle of identity. And equality is a fiction. I utilize, um, I'm using the term fiction in the same way that it has been described in Francia and also Foucault. But unlike, uh, for example, Christoph Menke, who consider equality of potential but subject need to action to develop this potential, and that's the, the concept of aesthetic of equality in Menke, Rancière aesthetic of equality can only be formulated in a radical inactivity. Equality must be thought far from the logic of action, because this had been what, from its origin, has determined the division of bodies as a stranger, of a techne, or with capacity. As Rancière underlined, action is a mode of thought and a structure of rationality. So the politics of fiction and the fiction of politics is defined, defined in Rancière through his definition of the concept of equality as an a priori. I would say it's not, uh, it's a provocation, it's not a priori, uh, I will explain. That idea, uh, the, the equality uh, as a priori, is uh, that at the same time function as a uh, simultaneous uh, present and therefore as a historical time. That is, equality is also part of the history. We would say this as if is close to the idea of uh, uh, Kant, no? as of, um, and as if that to say it, is in bringing an actualization of equality without falling into the logic of action. And this is, lastly, or firstly, what begins the, divi the division. In this way, from this virtuality, the impossible becomes, becomes real. Thus, that Francia responds to the tyranny of the plot as logical verisimilitude, that since Aristotle we haven't seen, as approximate true to the coherent and left at out what is possible and true but impossible. So, yeah, five minutes? Yeah, five okay. minutes. Okay, yeah. 
And at the same time, the principle of, of equality is also a performative, a priori, in its action for the enunciated or the other. The world is enunciated as thought it were other. The possibility of this contradictory formulation belongs to the very nature of literature, that is, it is a fictional and not rational logic. We would say we, we find a model of emancipatory thought in the very fable of organize this work, and this is what I think is working like a, the real a priori. And that would be one of the, uh, the, the words, uh, the sentence we find in the work of, of Jacques Todd, learn something and relate it to all the rest according to this principle. All men have an identical intelligence. This is uh, the sentence, the, the a priori work. Equal, not identical. Sorry? Equal. Equal. Equal, not identical. Yes, equal, totally. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, this principle would be close to the Kantian uh, as all, well, but I would like to think, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to open this question, uh, whether this is also maybe dealing with uh, ethics based on the idea of gift, um, that is to say, the time that literature gives us as an event is, as the reader defining in giving the time, a gift because this time is not reintroduced into the cycle of an exchange. It is ethical experience of otherness that is of the justice, justice of time. And then, as in Foucault, the politics is rooted in the ethical. It's a question, <laughs> Final, or a hypothesis. <laughs> Finally, it is true that we find in modern times the affirmation that contrary to the prediction of the end of the great narrative, we are still fully immersed in their causal structure, I think that we find in Rancière's work itself a proposal for an alternative temporality to the theological one, and this is already we have been talking about, is the time of simultaneity. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very, very rich and stimulating talk. I guess there are many reactions, maybe by uh, Jacques Francia himself, <laughs> but you can ask questions uh, in, in French to understand the yes. question. Yeah. Donc, vous poser vos questions maybe. en français. Uh, uh, yeah. Je pourrais <laughs> If no, je, you, si I will ask you. Si je traduirais à Jocena, qui elle-même répondra en anglais, et je pourrais traduire ses réponses si vous voulez, mais comme là, personne n'a traduit l'exposé, je pense qu'on va considérer qu'il est... Yeah, <laughs> qu'on te comprend en anglais. Yes. Y a-t-il des questions euh, des réactions, euh, peut-être, puisque chaque ancien avait un moment posé une question sur, un, sur Equality. Donc peut-être on pourrait revenir sur ce, sur ce moment. Non Non, je n'avais pas de. Ouais. Une, une précision. Je pas de question. Bah, non, non, je n'avais pas de question particulière à ce, à ce sujet. D'accord, donc peut-être. Merci. Merci. It's hard to add. Uh, I'm sorry, yes, but uh, the math reading English, it's a little too much. Uh, so maybe you could come uh, up front. Thank so you. Sorry. Yeah, very fast. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. uh, I was wondering if I heard well what you were uh, saying that I found uh, very interesting, but I wasn't sure about one uh, idea. It was that uh, with the logic of action, mm -hmm. there would start division, you said, and that would be the reason why action being uh, in, a, in the same field as uh, work or the, the, mm -hmm. the official places, mm -hmm. uh, therefore action would not be thought. Uh, in its concrete ways. Would it be what you were yeah. saying or am I pushing it in another direction? No, it, it's exactly, yeah, when I was speaking about the um, Christoph Menke book uh, called Force, mm -hmm. he was there um, arguing that we are potentially all equals, but we have to develop this uh, potential by action, but then we are not equals. 
mm-hmm. because you have to do things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what happens if you are not doing, and one is doing more than you, then we are again in the logic, uh, the people working in those things and the people doing other things, or people have no time for thinking because we are beginning already to, with a division of work. So emancipation cannot be part of the action. So I think if it's uh, in, mm. I think when I'm reading um, um, the philosophy of uh, Jahanse, I think mm. it's important to think equality is a radical equality. All of us, uh, we are equals, even if we are not uh, in action. Mm. Yeah. Peut-être que le concept d'action est peut-être un peu équivoque, oui. euh, est un peu équivoqué ici, peut-être, hein, je veux dire que euh, bon, l'idée, l'idée est à la fois que bon, disons, l'égalité doit être présupposée et qu'en même temps elle passe son temps à se, à se vérifier. Bon, le concept que j'ai repris de Jacques Otto, c'est, bon, la, c'est, la, la, vérifi- c'est, la, c'est la, la vérification. C'est-à-dire que précisément, disons, il ne s'agit pas de savoir si on va être sur les égaux au départ et puis pas égaux à l'arrivée, au bout de l'action. Il s'agit de penser l'action comme processus finalement de vérification de, de l'égalité. Yes. Ce n'est pas simplement le processus de, d'actualisation de l'activité, de, de, disons, de l'égalité que quelqu'un posséderait, mais le processus de vérification d'une égalité qui est supposée être partagée. So. I, I would have a small question, but it's a more general point. But it's really about the relation of ethics to, to politics, because mm-hmm. for you it's a, what, a kind of obvious thing that you have to go from ethics to politics somehow, as if, you know, it, mm-hmm. uh, politics was a kind of a supreme state uh, of, uh, of ethics. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, and I just want to know uh, if this uh, kind of, you know, hierarchy uh, is something that is really uh, obvious in all the works you're studying? When I'm working on Foucault, yeah. I'm, I have it quite clear. Mm-hmm. Uh, the um, ethics is the roots of uh, politics mm-hmm. in Foucault. But of course, it's not uh, for everybody uh, so clear. So yeah. I think I know th- there was a question this morning between mm-hmm. the difference yeah. between ethics and politics, and I think in Foucault there is, uh, yeah, the root is there. If I I would think um, if uh, we are thinking in the problem with politics is when is beginning politics with if I'm <laughs> thinking. With, uh, for example, with Simon Bay or thinking with Balibar. So every time you are ready or making a, ci- a city, so the beginning of citizen, so the division is already the politics where you are asking for uh, ra- rights and also for laws. So um, I will say in Foucault is clear, mm, but uh, I'm not totally sure <laughs> by myself. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Very Another debate, I guess. Yes. Okay. Um, well, I can ask a question. Uh, yes, I okay. can, please. Um, thank you very much, Asusena. Maybe I, I want to have a precision about um, the, the expression of new mythology. Yes. And uh, I, I remember a title of a, a book of Jacques Rancière mm-hmm. uh, that is the, the method of, the e- of equality. Mm-hmm. And somehow there is maybe something like, oh, well, well, a, a mise en scène d'une utopie qui est une vérification. I don't know if I'm, I'm mm-hmm, really mm-hmm, precise mm-hmm. or clear about that. But new mythology, I'm not sure I understand, but maybe it's true. So can you please uh, explain to me what mm-hmm. new mythology means according to you? Is it connected to utopia? Is it connected to mm-hmm. some kind of, uh, I don't know. Yes. Um, here there are two concepts working. The one is the, t- uh, the time. We are talking about the, the end of the great um, uh, um, receipts, uh, I don't know, 40 years <laughs> or even more, since uh, the uh, uni- uh, Soviet Union fall. We are already turning. This is the end of the great uh, narratives, right? Um, and the problem usually is we are in this theologi- theological time thinking the best is coming. 
well this now is not co working no. at all so now we are in the time that every time in the past it was always better <laughs> and like old people when old people now thinking that the past is always better and we are not uh, any longer thinking the future is going to save us like a text in ex machina so the utopia is not really working any longer i think the mythology is a better work it's used by Foucault, it's nothing I, I said uh, by myself. Uh, it's, the, it's also the idea that we are uh, capable of belief, like verosimilitude. We are inside of a narrative of the present times, and we are believing uh, we are by the end of the, uh, of the times. <laughs> this is a very, very verosimil right now not 10 years ago but now it is so our I, I usually explain to my student we are now exactly in an exchange of uh, uh, better similitude of narrative because we are now believing things and it was very funny because that time when we were inside at home with uh, COVID and also in Granada we, we have um, uh, mountains moving so terremotos I don't mm. know Yes, so it was like, a, really, this is the end of the world. And people begin to make jokes like, well, and tomorrow zombies are coming to Granada or something like that. Mm -hmm. That means that, that we are open to believe things we didn't believe before. Mm -hmm. And this is a very interesting time right now. But I don't know, we are believing that that world is going to finish, but we are not believing, I don't know, something different and better. <laughs> because if we believe it, and change the narrative of the present. So that's the change with the idea of the mythology, that is something in the present times, that we are believing right now, not for the future, mm. but for the nowadays. Mm. And I think this is uh, okay, more productive than utopia, mm. yes. Thank you very much. Uh, there's no other question. I think we need to move on. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. 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 Thank you.